What's going on everybody? I'm Ant Pruitt. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Just another day on this here grind, but actually I'm chilling a little bit for once. And um, just hanging out here at the airport, watching the airplanes go by. I have an appointment for a project here in about an hour, but I just want to decompress a little bit and go through some emails and give a quick video for y'all. I want to apologize for any of the ambient sound that you hear out here at the airport overlook. Don't have all of the acoustic treatment inside of the car, but it'll be all good. This video is not going to be like your typical, my typical videos that I do with the tutorials and things of that nature. I'm just going to chat with you folks right here face to face. What I want to do is answer a question that I am asked all the time. I'm glad people ask questions and, and I appreciate that. It, it's, it's flattering, but I get this one question all the time. And this time I got it in an email, uh, a pretty long email from a guy named Jason. I'm not going to say his last name, but he gave me permission to share this over the, uh, over the video and whatnot. And, um, let's just get right into it. Hi, Ant. It's Jason here. And I have a question in regards to photography. I chose the email so I can write everything Ant at antpruitt.com. No rush in getting back to me. I try my best. This is a general question I'm throwing out there and I know you're busy. <laughs> I'm just chilling right now. All right, uh, skipping along here. Let's see, uh, first, I first got the Nikon D5600 last year around this time. I am loving photography and this is a wonderful camera to start with. However, I feel like I'm ready to graduate to a better body. The tough part is brought about because the D5600 is a crop sensor camera. I've researched the web over and over and watched video after video of full frame versus crop sensor. Boy, I know, I know a bunch of people that's done that. If we have endless money, there'd be no debate. Just go out there and the best of every, get the best of everything and you're done. However, I'm sure I'm not the only person in this position. The main benefits of full frame seem to, seem to be better depths of feel and dynamic range. Are those two factors so important that I should make the jump? I could upgrade to an older D750, which is full frame. And from what I've read is a workhorse or stay crop sensor and get something like this D7500, which looks pretty good for the price. Although it's the same price as in the used D750. He was also looking at the D500, which is around $1,800, but he thought, but if he's willing to buy that, he might as well buy the new mirrorless Z6, which is around $2,000. Okay, so I'm gonna skip along here. Anyway, the gist of this here email was he wanted to know what kind of camera should he buy? Uh, the difference between him and some of the other emails that are similar uh, to this one is he's already shooting. He already has a camera that he's pretty comfortable with and, and established himself with, and he's just ready to, you know, upgrade and move on. That happens in photography. The issue that I have is we're at a, we're at a state in time now where we have access to so much information to where there's, there's an advantage to having that access. And it's also a disadvantage. We can get overwhelmed with millions and millions of different views and reviews and, and, and write-ups and videos based on whatever particular subject that we want, especially when it talks about art and uh, photography and things of that nature. And people are gonna have a ton of different opinions. A lot of times the opinions get in the way of, of, of actual facts. You get people that are fanboys and things like that and they just have their whole allegiance to a particular brand a particular type of camera what have you and that's okay you can have your allegiance to whatever but if you're going to be in a position like this position that i'm in we need to be pretty frank and straightforward about all of this i have two cameras i have a full frame camera and i have a crop sensor camera i have a canon 6d mark ii and I have a Canon Rebel T something other. I can't remember what it is. I love both of them. I shoot with both of them. Um, the advantages, let's, let's just go ahead and look at uh, piece by piece of this email. 
He asked about going from crop sensor to full frame. You know, the advantages of it, is it worth it, yada, yada, yada. The thing that people tend to forget is for a manufacturer to create a full frame camera, it costs them a little more money. Therefore, they're gonna charge you a little more money for it. Um, it's, I don't have a link in front of me right now, but I'll put it in this, the description of this video showing how the cost of just a, a of roughly an inch <laughs> makes a huge difference to the manufacturer as far as uh, putting those things out there. So yeah, first off, expect to pay more for a full frame camera. It is what it is. Advantages of that full frame camera, ideally more light, more light being able to get to the sensor in photography, light is, is what matters. Now, granted, if you have too much light, it'll blow out your shot. Like this background right here looks all blown out. But in general, you want light so you can take really great shots and not have a lot of grain and noise and things like that. And with the full frame camera, you had an advantage when it comes to that in low light situations. When I'm sitting out here right now at 10 a.m. on a random day with, you know, random sun, my full frame camera versus my crop sensor camera can step out here and take the identical shot. I put it at the same settings or what have you. This full frame camera is probably going to be a little more blown out because there's going to be a little more light coming in, but it's okay. It's still usable. That crop sensor is still going to take a great shot because there's plenty of light out here for the particular scenario. So don't get caught up in full frame versus crop sensor unless you have specific reasoning for going to full frame me in my situation i shoot a lot of low light photography i shoot a lot of nighttime street photography uh, nighttime long exposures and things of that nature so i'm going to get better results going with my full frame camera from a technical standpoint it's going to make it a lot easier for me in post versus dealing with the crop sensor that's that's why I did it. It's because of the, the way that I like to shoot full frame fits my scenario better. Full frame may not fit your scenario better. So save the money and instead put that money in better glass. All of these cameras come with their uh, what they call kit lenses. And these lenses are good enough to get you started and good enough to get your eyes rolling to where you can see what kind of shots you have the capability to shoot. But if you get a much better lens, you're just gonna take up that shot style and that shot uh, quality exponentially better. You know what I'm saying? So if you want, and if it were me, I buy more lenses, first of all. If the body is, is able to do exactly what you need it to do from a comfort standpoint, from a shooting standpoint, far as the type of shots that you do, keep that body, get yourself more SD cards and get yourself better lenses. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people fall into the manufacturer worlds. You have Canon versus Sony versus Nikon versus Fujifilm and whatever variations after that. Screw worrying about the manufacturers. I personally am a fan of Canon. Nikon, they make great cameras. Sony makes great cameras. But I decided a long time ago to give Canon a shot and I'm glad because I like Canon lenses. Canon glass seems to be really, really good. And my options for getting Canon lenses is pretty easy to get. And so it just made more sense for me in my situation to just stick with the Canon brand. And I'm totally fine with that. Does Sony have some advantages over Canon? Yes. Does Nikon have advantages over Canon? Yes. Fuji, they all do and vice versa. Canon may have some advantages over those other folks, but you have to look at what's going to work for you. So don't fall into the trap of reading all of those different reviews, reading all of those, watching all of those different videos and just getting this massive sensory overload to where you can't make a decision that's going to be smart for your particular scenario because your photography and videography scenario is not gonna be the same as mine, just not. Granted, you may want to do more long exposure and, and 
street photography and things of that nature just as I do. So you may assume that going out and buy, buying the Canon 6D Mark II is, is the best way to go. That's wrong. That Canon 6D Mark II may not feel right in your hands. So why do that to yourself? That's, that's the kind of thing that you have to consider. When you want to go out and figure out, when you're trying to figure out the type of camera that you want, first and foremost, I recommend going to a shop that allows you to put the cameras in your hands. Be able to, to put the camera in your hands and see what it feels like. I've said before on previous videos, I'm not a fan of mirrorless cameras because they don't feel right. They're too small for my hands. Now granted, the newer models are starting to get a little bit bigger. The Canon EOS R is a little bit larger and it felt right in my hands. It still has its issues, but I would consider that just because of how it feels. It feels more comfortable and it feels more like a DSLR that I'm used to. So take all of that stuff into consideration and put it down, put down all the pros and cons and figure out what's the best scenario when it comes to finding the camera that's going to fit for you. All right. I hope that helps. Um, I've already replied back to Mr. Jason in his e in, in this email and he's going to be on his way and I don't know what camera he has now, but I just wanted to pass that along to you folks here that are subscribed on the channel. Thanks again for all of your continued support. I would like for you to do me a favor and hit that share button and hit that like button and pass this channel along to some other folks. I'm trying to get up to about 5,000 subscribers. If, um, if you can help me out with that, I greatly appreciate it. All right. So till then, y'all stay tuned for some more content, um, tutorials and things of that nature. Today, Adobe just announced some big updates to Premiere Pro After Effects and Audition ahead of the NAB show next week. So check that out. I got an article over on techrepublic.com talking about that stuff. They did a little press conference with me last week that I had to keep my mouth shut on it. So I couldn't share anything. But um, yeah, so go over to techrepublic.com. Check that article out. I just put a link in the description. Until then, I will catch y'all on the next video. Have yourselves a good day. Get out there, create, and dominate.